Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and today we are doing more Drew-it-yourself projects because I just needed to do more. Like I think I mentioned in my last video that I was just gonna combine all my fall content into that one room decor slash room makeover video, which if you guys have not seen, I uploaded it like maybe a week and a half ago and I'll put it in a card up here. But I kind of just wanted to honestly to break out more fall decor. I'm just in the mood for some reason. I was just gonna keep it to one video, but I was like, you know what? Let's do one more video. So I'm doing one more fall inspired DIY home decor video today for you guys and a good majority I think three out of four of them are actually really great to use year-round if you just like more warm tone home decor and then one of them is a little bit more it's like pumpkin themed so of course that's a little bit more Octobery, november -y sort of fall harvest themed if you will but I wanted to make some projects in this video that were not super super themed to fall but just fit the color palette and just fit the mood for the fall time anyways if you are not already guys make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and I have some really fun videos coming out that you guys are going to legit love. I've been planning them. I've been filming them. Turn on that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you're notified when I upload brand new videos because if you're subscribed, sometimes YouTube doesn't even send you the video. So click that bell because you're going to get the video in your inbox. Um, and also make sure to follow me on Instagram. It's Lone Fox Home. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff over there. I actually just launched my first set of Lightroom presets um, and they're really great for you to use on your phone. So if you would like to edit your photos in a similar style that I do, I just launched them. There's actually seven presets that you get for $15. $15 and you can just download them, put them in your Lightroom app on your phone, which is 100% free and filter your photos in a similar way I do. And it's actually perfect for fall because a lot of the filters are very warm tone, but I'm just going to stop rambling because we need to get into this fall decor. I think you guys are going to love these projects and I'm just honestly so excited for you to watch them. So let me know which one is your favorite, but let's get started. Jumping right into the first project here, I actually had this IKEA plastic box storage that's been, literally been in a drawer for so long. So I decided to spray paint it white. I believe you might be able to purchase these white, but I had a mint one. So I took some spray paint, spray painted it white, but I left the inside mint because I loved that color. And then I grabbed some leaves and these I actually got at Joanne's Fabrics. They are real leaves. They sell them in miniature bundles, some eucalyptus, and then some dried baby's breath flowers. Just anything that's kind of like fall vibes, you know? And then I took uh, the leaves and I actually put them in the top of the lid and the thing that I I love about this lid is that it actually had like this lip around the edge which is about a half of an inch tall so I knew I would be able to put some stuff in here and then epoxy over the top of it to create like a really unique lid so what I did was I used a hot glue gun to glue these leaves or flowers or whatever you're putting in here down and you're gonna want to make sure that you really glue them so that they're perfectly flat so try to glue around all of the edges glue every single part of the leaf every single part of the flower down so it is flat that way when we pour the epoxy or the resin over the top it fills in all the gaps and areas and it makes it like a sheet of glass over these really pretty little florals now guys here's where i kind of messed it up like i'm not gonna lie i wish i would have left it just colored but i was like you know what i'm gonna make it tone on tone and see how it looks so i sprayed it white wasn't my favorite but I kind of saved it by adding a couple more leaves and just kind of giving it a more layered look. So what I did was I grabbed my epoxy and I did equal parts of the hardener and equal parts of the resin. You mix them up as the label says. And I get mine at Joann's by the way, and you can get like a big bottle of this. Also use a 50% coupon so you can get it like for a nice good price, you know? So I mixed these up as the instructions say, mix them together. And then I poured it in the actual lid of the container. But the thing is, is that I, my camera died literally as I was pouring it in. So I poured it in as you could see. So I tried to catch the end of it, which I was able to successfully do so. I put a piece of Palo Santo actually in there just as like a little lid pole. And then I decided I wanted to add more resin. So I used my tape around the edges just so nothing overflowed, mixed up another little batch of resin and poured it over the top. Look how satisfying that is. So I poured that on there um, and it actually didn't overflow. It filled it up perfectly. Let this dry overnight and you're just gonna have this really cool organic natural box. This next project here is kind of an eclectic take on your traditional stuffed 
pumpkin decor item. So I grabbed these velvets and one of them is a crushed velvet and one of them is just a normal velvet. And the thing that I'm gonna share with you guys is like two easy ways to create circles. So if you find a small circle item, you can put it in the center of your fabric and I just kind of eyeballed out from the edge about three inches and it's so much easier than trying to freehand a circle on a piece of fabric. But of course you can use a template as well. I just cut out a random, probably about nine inch circle of fabric and I wanted to keep it organic looking because I feel like it makes your pumpkin a little bit of a better shape. So I grabbed a piece of embroidery thread and a needle and I just went in and out all around the edges doing a basic stitch because we're gonna gather this in the center once we go all the way around the edge and create a pumpkin. So the thing I love about this is the velvet really adds a nice texture and this crushed velvet is so pretty. I wish I was able to get the yellow one in the crushed velvet as well. But I stuffed it with a little bit of polyfill. You can do this from an old pillow or just pick up a pack at Joann's, whatever you wanna do. And this is what it ended up looking like. You're going to pull it tight and then tie it in a knot. So you're gonna create this almost like donut-esque shape. And then I took a wooden dowel and I cut it down. This looks a lot more aggressive than it actually was. I just cut it down on this little, um, cutting tool that I have. And then I use a hot glue gun to just glue it down into the center. And the thing I suggest is to push it down in the center and then twist it all the way to the bottom and try to catch the fabric at the bottom so that it kind of creates that pumpkin bulbous shape. Um, I know that sounds weird, but that's what it is. So I went on to my yellow fabric. The tip I use for this is to cut a basic square out and then create four notches in the center points and then connect those notches. So by just creating little half circles. So you don't have to really freehand an entire circle. You're just freehanding curves that end up to be a circle. So then I cut that out. This is the yellow velvet and I use a little bit of embroidery floss with a needle. I went all the way around the edge, same as the last one. It's super simple. I literally created both of these pumpkins in probably what was five to 10 minutes max. So you can create a ton of these and I think they're really, really nice for anyone who has a more eclectic style or like a vintage style. I think this is a really cute play on your traditional pumpkin decor. So I went ahead, added the dowel in the top as well. You can add a little felt leaf as well if you wanna kind of give a little bit of a quirky element too, um, whatever you feel. Or you can use an actual stick from outside. I just had these dowels on hand so that is exactly what I did. Push it down to the bottom and these are your finished velvet pumpkins. Moving on into project number three, I grabbed this glass vase slash candle holder from Joann's Fabrics and also a couple of acrylic paints from my paint stash. I'm um, just in like fall themed colors. I actually was inspired by these vases I found on Anthropology, but they were really expensive. So I wanted to create kind of a dupe version. So what I did was I took my acrylic paints and just put them on a surface. And what you're going to do is just take your acrylic paint and make sure that it's very, very thick and globby because you're going to want to create these really textured paint strokes on your vase. So this is kind of like a paint stroked vessel slash vase if you want to call it that and I use different tones of peach tan like a cranberry color you can just mix whatever colors you like now the thing that I wish I did was I think that this actual shape of the glassware that I got is just a little bit outdated I feel like if I was to get like a simple kind of like cylinder shape or one that was more inspired by the anthropology shape this would have been a little bit cuter but in the end I think it still turned out really really cute so I added the cranberry color I also went in with a wash of this peach tone paint and I just filled in all the gaps to kind of create a milky effect on the glass. And how I did that was just with a little bit of water mixed into the paint and I just filled in all the gaps and I didn't care if anything bled because I thought that it added a nice little effect. So if any of the cranberry color got into it, that was no concern. So I just kind of mixed it around, added a ton of different textured paint strokes, went all the way through, let it dry in between. And then I added this nice little taupey brown color as well. And I actually ended up doing about six coats of a clear gloss over the top of it. This is kind of the one that I use. And then I also added a little bit of liquid leaf, but I didn't actually film those portions. So it ended up looking like this. I wanted to create a pillow as well. So I found these little fabric quarters at Joann's Fabrics. They're super affordable. And I also got just a quarter yard of each of these other fabrics cut, but I just got them in different little patterns that I thought were cute for the fall time um, that can also transition to be year round if you want to. So all you're gonna do is cut little squares out of your fabric and we're cutting leaf shapes. So how I do this is I actually fold the fabric in half, almost as if you're creating one of those paper hearts, if you remember, like when you fold the 
it in half and then you create half the heart and you open it, it creates the full heart. We're doing the same thing with the leaf. So we're folding in half, cutting half the leaf shape and then when you open it, it's gonna be the full leaf shape. So I have some mustard fabrics. I have that really pretty gingham one. And then if you could see that one on the left, it is so cute. It has little woodland creatures on it and then it has like trees and stuff. So I just cut multiple different fabrics out in this really pretty like light-ish yellow tan taupey color palette and I also added the dark gray just for some contrast. So these are my finished off leaves and I pushed those up and we're working on a simple white Ikea pillowcase and I'm placing these leaves all over the place and once I have them placed in the desired kind of like style that I like, I'm going in with just a tiny little bit of fabric glue right on the center just to hold them in place because I am going to be hand stitching them down. So I'm just adding the fabric glue to hold them as I'm hand stitching so I don't have to kind of place each one and what I'm doing is I'm just going in with a little bit of a cream toned embroidery floss and just doing the most basic in and out like stitch around each of the leaves so I did this on every single leaf I actually have to finish up a couple of them still because I ran out of the embroidery floss color I was using so I went around all of the leaves went in and out and I'll just let you guys watch so you can kind of see exactly what I am doing but it's just a repetitive process from here but it's a great thing to do like while you're watching a tv series perhaps hocus pocus since it's the fall time maybe even in Halloween Town, maybe even a spooky horror movie, whatever you want to watch, just feel free to watch anything while you're doing this. So guys, that was my video for today. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed those projects and I hope that they're great um, items that you guys can kind of transition into other seasons as well and keep in your home for a long time if they are things that you do like, but they are perfect for the fall time if that is kind of what you're going for. My arm is literally about to break off. Anyways, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I've been commenting back so much to you guys lately. It is so much fun. So leave a comment. Let's have a little discussion in the comment sections below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified when I upload brand new videos. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Fox Home, and then my personal Instagram at I'm Drew Scott, which is where you can find a lot of those presets. So if you were curious about them, link in the description box below for the presets. I'm really excited about them. And I was actually also thinking, guys, should I create a set of presets for interior design photos? Like for more lifestyle, like flat lay, interior, kind of like moody style of photos, not really like people photos, you know, more like product photos in a way. Not really product, but like lifestyle-y photos. Does that make sense? Um, let me know if you guys would like that. I edit all my photos in a certain way on my Lone Fox Instagram, so let me know if you're curious about that. I can definitely create a preset pack as well. Have an amazing rest of your day. I love you all so much, and bye guys.